Hey everyone, it's Zereldo here, and today I'm going to be showing you the Undead Slayer class. Now, this was released during the Doomwood Chapter 1 saga, and it's a pretty cool class. A lot of people don't actually like it so much, because it's only useful against Undead, but that's actually why I love it so much. It, it's a bit tricky. Now, I'm going to show you how to use this class against Undead, which is its true purpose. I'm not going to show you how to use it against other enemies, because in truth, it won't even do that well. It's only got three moves that actually work against non-undead, and even then, they actually get more effective against undead. This class has some few nice tricks, and I hope to be able to show you that. So yeah, just sit back, watch, and enjoy some fun versus the undead. Now, to get this class, you'll actually have to get rank 10 Doomwood and come to Light Guard Keep. Rank 10 Doomwood may sound like a bit of a pain, but it's a really good rank 10 to get. And I'll show you why. You come to the rep stop, uh, the rep shop. And you just look here, and already you see two different classes. I've already done a Death Knight guide, and I'm now doing the Undead Slayer guide. So by getting rank 10, you'll straight out be able to buy these two classes. Uh, as you can see, it's really good for members, not so good for everyone else. However, if you just look here, there's the Necronomicon, and you need this to become a Necromancer and get the Necromancer class. So actually, you get essentially three classes from one rank 10. So if you want to get a rank 10, this is the one to get, as far as I'm concerned. Necromancer is a beast. And Death Knight's interesting, and Undead Slayer's certainly got its purpose. You do have the option of the traditional AC shortcut, but personally, there's two chapters of Doomwood. You can get a lot of rep out of that on its own, and then there's daily quests and other many things. Doomwood's probably one of the easiest reputations to get ranked in, and there are three classes, and this isn't official or anything, but there definitely is a potential for a Doomwood chapter three, more rep from there, and another class. So... ACs or 50,000 gold, feel free to choose which one you like best. So my feeling is that you use fighter enhancements with this class. Everything, even the heal, funnily enough, is physical. Now the alternative here is using a bit of luck, and that works too. Um, I'd recommend sticking to fighter, maybe half and half, maybe three fighter, one luck. Or full luck if you want. Criticals could be very interesting with this class, and you'll see why soon. I'll tell you about the rank 10 passive in combat once I've explained some of the base functions of this class. But I'll go over the, the rank 4 passives. So the first one is the rejuvenation one, which gives you more endurance, which is a fancy way of saying more health. And you get 10% haste. So you can kill undead enemies more fast, fastly, faster, bad grammar. You can kill them faster, and once you see this class in action, you'll see why that's important, because this class actually has a function that a few other classes don't, and this does make it really unique and exciting to use against undead. This class really is focused for destroying them. Now, before people start asking about the axe, it's the platinum something of destiny. I just double check on that. It is the platinum axe of destiny. And it is a platinum version of Artix's axe, and this was available for all members to purchase during the testing of the prologue to the story, like the Chaos Saga. So it was a nice little test, it was pretty cool, and we got this for a thousand gold. It's permanently rare, it hasn't been available since January, February 2009, so it's never coming back. Now, one thing you've got to pay attention to is whenever you actually hit an undead enemy, you get spirit power. Now, just to be clear, if you miss them, you will still get spirit power. So you can see the value of that rank 4 passive of 10% haste, just every now and then getting more spirit power. You might be thinking, well, that's all very good and well. What do I do with increased spirit power? Well, it actually powers up all four of your moves, but the power up only works against the undead. So I'll just talk quickly. Um, exercise is 10 mana with a two second cooldown, as I've said before, all these moves are physical. And 
It's enhanced by spirit power. It's more effective against the undead. So, as you may or may not have seen, you've actually got a limited time frame. There you go. You see its power. Limited time frame to attack the undead. So you actually want to really stay in combat or else you're going to lose your spirit power. You probably saw a nice critical hit there. This isn't the most stable damage range, but I like the axe. Now you've got your heal, which is pretty powerful based on your spirit power once again. You, it's a 10 second cooldown, it only costs 20 mana, so it's quite a reliable heal that you can constantly use while fighting the undead. As you can see, this basic attack is getting pretty powerful with all the spirit power. It goes to a maximum of 200. Now that you've got the grips of what spirit power actually does, what you need to know is that it stacks to the most at 200. Now the problem with this is that it, you, if you have lag or stuff, you can potentially lose all your spirit power and have to start stacking again. Your third move here, Vorpal Strike, is actually really cheap as well. 10 mana, 5 second cooldown. And it's a strong attack enhanced by your spirit power. Just to give you an indication of how strong this is. Damage range could um, be affecting this, but as you can see, it's just hit a 6k crit. So now you can see why luck could be a very nice thing to play around with this class. You could get some very high crits against the undead but not against very much else. As you can see with an unstable damage range you can, because of this power up, you can get a lot or you can get none. Now the final move is a bit of a trick because it's called the Dragon Lance, based on a move actually from Dragon Fable, Artix, which was actually based off the short film Artix versus the Undead. That's where that move comes from. It's a cool move because it costs, it's got a large cooldown, 30 seconds, and it Cost 30 mana. It's the ultimate attack, but it requires you to have at least 20 spirit orbs, and to actually use it, you've got to spend them all. So, just as an example, 21,000. As you can see, it's really good against the undead, but you will, you can only use this move against the undead, and it won't do very much anywhere else. So it's a specialized class and it does its specialization very well. It's a lot of fun to use against the undead, but it won't do you much good anywhere else. It is member only though, and that's a problem with it. But it's also fair, I mean, it's not like non-members are missing out on a whole lot because you can only use it against the undead. Undead are going to up quite a large proportion of the in-game enemies, so it may be worth having for that. For getting things such as the Blinding Light of Destiny or Sepulchre's Armor, this class could speed up the process significantly, but then again, so could classes with large multis. Yeah, I'll leave you with that.